need to get to our next guest. Uh, he is a director. That's interesting. Um, Maybe and he I, can hook me up with a job or something. Yeah, and he has a new movie in theaters right now. It's called Mother's Day. Please welcome Gary Marshall. Thanks for having me on your program. What a pleasure it is to be up here in Toronto, the New York and Los Angeles of Canada. <laughs> what, what are the other cities then? What's Vancouver? Oh boy. Uh, the Burbank of Canada. That's accurate. What, uh... Thanks for checking my math. I did the math. That's right. This stool is shorter than yours. How did you connive me into sitting lower than you? It's status. Listen, son, yeah. I've been doing this... I've been doing this a long time. I've been around... Many, many years. Let me have this one moment where I sit in a stool slightly higher than yours. It's not going to kill you. I'm sorry. You're right, Mr. Marshall. Please call me Gary. All right. I will. <laughs> Gary, I, uh, it's so great to see you, especially on such an auspicious week. I mean, it's not opening weekend, certainly, but it's second weekend, which is great for any B.O., box office. Yeah, you're using the terms. I don't know if everyone knows these uh, the showbiz terms. You know, of course, yeah, you know, sure, I know you're them. on yeah. TV. Uh, but uh, not everybody knows. B.O. We shorten box office to B.O. Box office is the money. That is, it goes over the, the transom of the box office window. Once it crosses that line, yeah. it's ours. It's We shortened it to B.O. from box office, from the money that comes into the box office. Right. From, we have a movie in the theater. People have paid money to see it. They surrendered that money at the box office and were granted permission to enter the theater to view the film. This is capitalism. <laughs> that was too long. People deemed it too long. It's good to shorten things. It's good to shorten things. <laughs> if they're too long. But some things, some things, some are, things are just right. Length. The perfect length, like Mother's Day in theaters now. Yeah. What is that, a nice 93 minutes? <laughs> it's a crisp 93 minutes. Just five you reels see, and out. That's right. You see some attractive people. Hector Elizondo makes an appearance. Before you know it, you're back home. It's like the movie never happened. That's the kind of movies I like to make. A movie where ladies see a commercial for it, you're like, did I see that? You, you want to make a movie that when someone is just about to die and their life flashes before their eyes, it never comes up. That's gruesome. Here's what I'd like to do. My goal is eventually is to make a movie that it gets into the theaters and I see a commercial for my own movie and I say, ooh, that's a good idea. I wish I thought of that. Uncle Scott, can I take my mom to go see Mother's Day on Mother's Day? If your mom would actually come by and look after you, that would be great. That's my fondest wish. You should let this nice young man see this movie with his mother. What a sweet thing. He seems like a very sweet boy. He stands up and he bows like Jeremy Piven at me. <laughs> Jeremy Piven! Oh, Jeremy I love that song. Piven! That's right. It's in the public domain now. Yep. That's what that's what directors sing when Jeremy Piven is cast in their films. Yeah. It's a chore. Why do you think he's never been in one of my movies? I haven't got time to sing all day. Well, fantastic. I mean, congratulations on Mother's Day. By all Thank accounts, you. It people is... don't like it. 
Everybody's having a great time writing their snarky reviews of Gary Marshall's Mother's Day. Like, oh, this is a fun new thing we could do. Let's talk about how this is the worst movie. Look, these are the movies I make. I'm not trying to hide it from anyone. All of a sudden, this one comes out. Oh, this is the worst movie we've ever seen. It's just like all the other movies I make. You think you're being cute. It's not cute. I, you know, back when movies like Pretty Woman came out, the internet wasn't around, and you know, no that's one knew. Right. No one would agree that a movie was terrible. Yeah, we it, would just watch it and go, "Oh, that's terrible." It wasn't the national pastime to say this is terrible. Let's all make a gif about it. Help! Calm, help. calm down! Calm down! He's screaming. <laughs> I'll, I'll protect you. He's screaming. Oh, thanks. I'll protect you. I'm a loud guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, son. So look, I'm not going to stop making movies. I don't care if uh, people are doing uh, uh, Peach and Periscope about how bad my movies are. I don't think peach? anyone's no doing one Peach. No one uses Peach. Peach was around for a day. I just heard about it. I'm sorry. I feel Boy, bad for Peach. Yeah, Peach One sucked. day and it was gone. Peach was a horrible app. What about Meerkat? Is that still going strong? I think Bono used to film, like, the encores with Meerkat, and then it was done. Gary, why don't you make a Snapchat What movie? did you call me? Gary! Please call me Mr. Marshall! You're a young child! Sorry. This is outrageous! Mr. Marshall? I have an yes. idea for your next film. What is it, son? Make it about Snapchat. So what, it's Snapchat day? Exactly. He doesn't know. He doesn't it's a holiday. Here's what I do. Sit down, son. You're being, you're being very rude and confrontational. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you're scaring me. I don't me. know why you're scared. Gary, should I punish oh, you? Oh, please call me Mr. Marshall. Hey. I'm in a state. I'm in an agitated state. I'm sorry. Everyone must, oh. call me, everyone must call me Mr. Marshall. All right, all right. For the next ten minutes. Calm down. Your Gary privileges are revoked. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son, right. put the stool down. I'm not a lion. <laughs> what are you, a uh, crazy dentist? Jeez. Now listen. Sorry, I gave you a great idea. I <laughs> When there's a Snapchat day, I'll make that movie. Here's what I do. I make movies about holidays. All right. What about President's Day? It's on the list. Look, I shot... I've already shot a bunch of them. Haven't even come out yet. I did them back to back, Lord of the Rings style. Really? President's Day, uh, Labor Day. Uh, uh, yeah, I stole the. I bought the title back from that depressing movie. Um, I did uh, St. Patrick's Day. I did. Uh, what about Halloween? I did Halloween. Oh, it's an unofficial sequel to the Halloween series. Oh, really? It's, it's got more murders than any movie that I've ever made. One? I rat yeah. <laughs> One murder. <laughs> Self defense. <laughs> so listen, I came up here because I'm gonna start on Canadian holidays. <laughs> this is great. First I'm gonna do <laughs> This is great. Canadian St. Patrick's Day that occurs in August. In August? Yeah. Really? That's right. St. Patrick's Day is so March. <laughs> Not up here. I don't know if that's accurate. But listen, I'm going to do one called Civic Public Holiday. <laughs> wow. That's a very popular yeah. day up here. Clearly. A lot of fans. Yeah, we Clearly. love it. What is that? It's, a, it's the first Monday in August. It's not a statutory holiday, and as such, only federal employees are required to give the day off. Now, here's what's great. We set the stage for a Romeo and Juliet-style love affair, hmm. where there's a beautiful gal, she works in the post office, guy works in the bakery, he's in love with her, <laughs> she's got the day off, he doesn't. He goes in to mail some cakes? Yeah, that's right. He mails some cakes. But the post office is closed. She goes to the bakery because it's a day off. Finally, she can go visit the bakery. He's not there. He's at the post office. Right. Hector Elizondo shows up as the postmaster general. Why is he there if it's his day off? <laughs> He's taking a busman's holidays, walking around 
delivering mail personally. Oh. It's like a gift to the community. He's sort of like Santa Claus on Civic, whatever it is, day. Yeah. <laughs> Give me something, Gary. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Marshall. You please call me Gary. Thank you, That was Gary. a momentary... Sorry, you're all right now? I'm you're... fine, I'm fine. Can you're... I call you Gary? It's a good question. <laughs> Let me ask you some questions. Okay. Are you respectful to your mother? Yeah. Is that true? I mean, she's not around, so maybe <laughs> he would be. It's a form of respect. <laughs> to be absent from someone's life, you're not troubling them. I guess I never thought of it that way. <laughs> More fathers should be respectful of their sons. Oh, many of them are. Do you get good grades in school? No. <laughs> All right. We're at one and one. <laughs> this is the tiebreaker. Worth 200 points. Oh, this was for points the whole time? Okay, hit me. Hit me, Gary. Oh. Mr. Marshall? That's right. <laughs> what? Do you wish to be when you grow up? Big. <laughs> Directed by my sister. Guess what? You got Gary privilege. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, what no. Stop what flopping that? your dick around. It hit weird. my I'm leg. Doing the hula hoop. It hit, hit, hit my knee. hula hoop dance. It's very disturbing that you have it out. <laughs> I can't have it in. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. yeah that's, that's his penis. I thought it was a fun prop. <laughs> no. For your filthy show that you do. Oh, thank you, Gary. <laughs> Is that a compliment? Yeah. <laughs> but listen, I'm not just up here to direct movies. Really? As you know, I like to hunt monsters. Oh, that's right. You're a monster hunter. Hunt Never said I wasn't. <laughs> no, nor have I. So we agree on this. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> I heard about some monsters you guys got up here. <laughs> in, in America, you know, uh, all the trails have gone cold. Sure. You haven't found uh, Bigfoot? I haven't found Bigfoot or Sasquatch? We have that. We have them. I know, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm crossing them off the list. Have you been over to Scotland? Have you tried to find Nessie? I have tried unsuccessfully to capture and exhibit the Loch Ness Monster. I do have hope I could do it in the future. Hmm. But. But the not, past. Not today. Nor the present. I cannot do it in the past because that has already happened. Mm -hmm. The present, I'm here with you. <laughs> Here's what I'm looking at. A lot of lake monsters. We have a lot of lakes here. Many well, that lakes. probably explains all the monsters. Yeah. Where else are they going to live? Hi. <laughs> Let me talk to this guy because he's a local. All right. I'll just be behind you. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm assuming. And I'll just be behind Christian. <laughs> all right. I'm glad we're all... Wait, wait, We're wait, all wait, wait. Todd, in time and space. What? Todd, don't get what? behind Christian. What? No, switch places. <sighs> Aww. Is that for my protection? They were chasing That's for your protection. Okay, okay, thank you. I wanted to be chased. You did want to be chased, didn't you? You got a little gleam in your eye. <laughs> yeah. You're like, he's going to chase me now. Everyone who's running from someone wants to be chased. What about escape criminals? They love it. It's, it's fun. An, it's an interesting take, son. Thank you. Here we go. Have you seen in recent weeks this... Canadian monster. <laughs> Cadborosaurus. 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 Like Cadbury cream egg, but then Borosaurus instead Cadbury of Murray. Cadbury Borosaurus. I don't think that's a monster. That sounds like a dinosaur. It's sounds a, delicious. It's a sea serpent. It's reported to live along the Pacific coast of the North American continent. Sound familiar? Ah. Uh. Maybe you're scaring the monsters away if you're talking around these lakes. But they're and like fish. You got to be so quiet. Oh, pardon me, you master of fun. He is a director of films. Please welcome Werner Herzog.
Dankeschön. Scott, what a pleasure it is to be here. Thank you for having me on your show here in Boston, Massachusetts. You're quite welcome, Werner. It's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, I hope this is true. <laughs> Do you have doubts? or? I know that to some people, uh, my demeanor can often be very dour, which is the way it's pronounced, not dour. Is that true? That is true. Why w- Welcome to your language. <laughs> Why then would the company doers, you know? <laughs> Who do you think is behind this mispronunciation? <laughs> They're behind Follow it. the money. <laughs> Good point. Um, Werner, I saw you m- a one... A week ago. Yes. A mere seven days ago. We were in uh, Los Angeles, California. <laughs> oh, someone says. <laughs> I do not understand this groan. <laughs> <laughs> no answers are forthcoming, although I stared bleakly into the audience <laughs> in the direction from which the groan came. Not willing to give it up. But my basilisk-like stare did not elicit a response. So I saw you in Los Angeles. And, yep. and uh, last time I saw you, uh, we had a good time. It was uh, at the Ace uh, Hotel. What are you doing in Boston now? That is a good question. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I, I, one would assume that it's researching a film or it's traveling. It's either business or pleasure. Let's narrow it down that way. Business or pleasure. It is a bit of both. As it so often is. I am taking over the direction of sheer madness. Explain to the certain amount of the audience who doesn't know what sheer madness, what that is. Well, please, you are the host. I believe that it would be rude of me (laughs) to take those explanation duties away from you. And yet I, you know, I fully abdicate them towards you. (laughs) You're very considerate. Sheer madness is a play that has been running for longer than any play should have ever run. How long do you think a play should run? One week. (laughs) It is a a comedy murder mystery show. Murder is funny to them. (laughs) To, To the creators of the play? Yes. I think that their intention is sensible, the idea that we must laugh in the face of that over which we have no control, to feel as if we have some control, however illusory. Are those the themes you hope to mine uh, when you direct this? I wish for people to come to Sheer Madness, the, the campy romp that has been running for 100 decades. <laughs> and I wish for them to leave uh, hoping to crawl into the nearest manhole and live the rest of their days in uh, the fetid sewers of Boston. <laughs> Hold on, there's more. (laughs) Knowing that they are merely living in an underground sewer for a change. (laughs) I'm saying that life is a sewer. I thought you were saying the city is an above ground sewer. No, Boston has no uh, claim on uh, living in a sewer that is uh, the claim of planet Earth. 
When you think about it, we all poop. Where's it go? When you think about what? Where's it go? I see no evidence of it. Where's it go? What are you talking about? Prove that, prove that we poop. And I'll believe you, but no one has. Have you ever had occasion to buy a product known as toilet paper? I don't keep it, though, in the house. The used stuff, the used stuff. Anyway, we're getting wildly off topic. <laughs> it's a late show. We're feeling silly. If you say so. That's what I love about you, Werner. You come out here, it's a late show, you bring a little energy to it. <laughs> Do you feel as if I'm being a real goofball right now? You're a wackadoodle. Just get you a rubber room. Listen to you. So you, you, man, so you've taken on these duties. Yes, it is fun to, uh, to get back into the theater. I have not directed uh, a theater production in many years. Really? What was the last one that you directed? Um, Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> and you directed it many years ago? I directed a, a preview of Hamilton, and then I was uh, told my services were no longer required. Take me through. We all know Hamilton, Lin Manuel Miranda's uh, wonderful Tony nomination. I mean, sixteen nominations. Did I read? Uh, I believe that. I do not know what you have read. So, <laughs> but, but is I, it the truth? But I believe that is correct. So I could have been reading a newspaper that got the facts wrong. You did not provide me with a bibliography. I, I forgive me. You have me at a disadvantage. I have not. Uh, investigated what you have and have not read. Fair enough, fair enough. But uh, we all know Hamilton, of course. The uh, uh, It's a hip-hop musical. Yes. Is that safe to say? That It is now, yes. <laughs> there was one preview where it most certainly was not. Really? So when you directed it, there was no hip-hop? There was, there was no hip-hop. I was very... <laughs> I was very liberal with my uh, rewriting of the libretto. So there was hip-hop in it. You took the libretto. There you... was hip-hop on the page that I uh, went in another direction with. What direction did you go in? If Gregorian I chants. <laughs> so take, take me through when these would come up. Alexander Hamilton, he arrives on a boat to the new land. Every place where there is a song in Hamilton, imagine there was a Gregorian chant. That's the entire show. That's correct. At what point don't you just say, you know, this is a show called Gregorian chanting? I'm sorry, is the title of the musical hip-hop? <laughs> I am being sarcastic. It is not. It's called Hamilton. But your Gregorian chants, were they about Hamilton? After a fashion. <laughs> they obliquely referenced Hamilton... Many, many times I thought the, 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 the creator would be satisfied by this, but uh, we had a disagreement. And how did this come to a head? I mean, Lin-Manuel Miranda is a fiery guy. He's passionate. Um, he, we had a discussion after he got out of the hospital. Um, he had to have his uh, jaw reset because when he saw what I had done to the production, his mouth... Uh, hung open so violently that uh, he damaged not only his jaw but his Adam's apple. <laughs> the force of his chin hitting <laughs> his own neck really caused a trauma. Like a carnival bell that you hit with a hammer? Like a carnival bell that you hit with a hammer. 
I am agreeing with you. It is the perfect example. All right, all right, all right, Bert. Many times as a boy, my parents would take me to the carnival and I would say, Please, mother and father, let us go directly to the bell. My favorite carnival attraction. The straw-hatted man behind the bell counter would hand me the little hammer and say, Have at it, little fellow. But be quick about it. There's a huge line behind you, as there always is at the carnival bell. And then we would have schnitzel. Speaking of the carnival, are you? Uh, uh, they, they no longer have the elephants at the circus. They just retired them uh, last week, I believe. Yes, it's a real shame because I thought the elephants brought. Uh, they really brought the sadness to the circus, and <laughs> without them, it is merely seedy. <laughs> but when you would see those gigantic creatures with their unbelievably somber eyes <laughs> wandering around the sawdust ring doing things that are clearly beneath them now that was a show now Well, fantastic. Werner, <laughs> you always light up a room, I have to say. It is better to light up a room than... Room up a light? <laughs> what am I, you? Well, it's really fun to have you here. I, can you stick around for the entire show? Of course uh, I can, yes. Okay, good. Please welcome the director, Werner Herzog. They're very close stools tonight. Danke schön. <laughs> Scott, if, if I may be so... <laughs> you, are, you are whipping me with the microphone cable in the manner of Indiana Jones. <laughs> I, I, for some reason, we have talked about Indiana Jones <laughs> during every tour stop this Is that year. So? I don't know why. Uh, I never tire of uh, uh, analyzing uh, uh, film and uh, the tactics of its heroes. And uh, this Indiana Jones is a curious character because, of course, he is the hero. And yet uh, he is a, a rampaging murderer. <laughs> it's true. He could have... That guy with the swords, he could have tried to he apprehend have him. To shoot him. He could have shoot him. He could have walked away. He was very far away from the fellow with the sword. He could have just turned right around and said, I don't want to fight. Also, why did Indiana Jones not join the war effort? <laughs> He's clearly an able-bodied man <laughs> who loves killing Nazis. It's archaeology professors back home. Yeah, he hated snakes, I, I imagine, like you. He hated nature. More than Nazis, apparently. <laughs> he could deal with there being Nazis in the world, but cannot abide a snake. So, Werner, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you. Uh, the last, I feel like the last time I saw you was in Boston, Mass. That sounds correct to me. Mm -hmm. Where did you park your car there? 
I'm always interested in, you know, people's parking situations in other states. Well, before then, uh, we had seen each other in Los Angeles, California, and um, I, uh, I will say that uh, I did not park a car in, uh, in Boston because um, I had my uh, phone's uh, GPS set to the wrong uh, instructions, and so I was forced to walk from Los Angeles to Boston. You, you realize that's just a suggestion. It's not... It's not the app forcing you to do what it is. I feel as if it is up to us to uh, obey the commands of uh, these uh, little computers because uh, what adventure uh, awaits us if we, if, we, if, we, if we do so. Do you, do you feel like the computers are going to soon be sentient and rise up and take over the earth? I pray that this is the case. <laughs> Why is that? You don't like humanity very much. I don't like nature. I like humanity. I like being a human being. Um, but uh, I do despise nature, and I wish we could get rid of it. What is your perfect ideal setting when you walk outside? Like if, if you didn't have to look at a tree. You do know? you remember those commercials for the uh, Macintosh computer where it would be uh, two people standing in a white void? I wish those two people would get out of the way. <laughs> Obstructing the view. <laughs> Precisely. Mm -hmm. um, well, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> How many words would you say are in your vocabulary? 25? Great? <laughs> I feel like I use great a lot. Do you, is there a word that you have that you use constantly? Um, <laughs> someone vomited up, up in the balk. Probably uh, despairing. Do you, does it, uh, when you're on your phone, does it autocorrect the minute Every you... Every single time. Sometimes I would like to say uh, to someone, hey, would you like to get some dessert? And it autocorrects to, would you like to get some despairing? And does the person kind of know what you mean? By this point, yes. <laughs> Who are you texting? Like, what is your life like? You know what I mean? It seems like every time I see you, we talk about work. We've talked about, of course, the Goodwill Hunting remake. That it, is that still happening? It's it's still it's still in the mix. But I, you know, we never talk about your personal life. Uh, you know, of like, do you have friends? I, I've never see you see you. With I anyone. have uh, many friends. Of course, uh, one of my greatest friends is no longer with us. The madman Klaus Kinski, who was uh, my friend and nemesis uh, for many years. Um, I put him in many of my films, and on uh, one occasion he tried to bribe uh, the natives of a foreign country to murder me. <laughs> but the joke was on him because the natives came to me and offered to kill him for free. Is that how he died? Did you take them up on it? I should say no more about this. <laughs> we'll move on, we'll move on. So, um, do you have a new project in the works? I mean, do you, you're always up to such interesting things. You have, you know, several Port of Call movies that you, you've gone through. That's correct. The Port of Call series keeps churning on. I'm, very, I'm glad you asked because I'm very excited to announce that I have an online film school that is going to be available to the public. I read about this. I read something about this. I may have not clicked on the link, but... I saw your name in a, in a link. Thank you for your uh, candor on whether or not you clicked on the link. I will certainly take that under advisement as I continue to live my life. What I mean to say is, is I don't have any of the info that I would need in order to sort of nudge you along the way here with your story, but... <laughs> Thank you for your nudge offer, but um, I already know my own story, so um, it is unnecessary. Um, 
It's an online film school. The idea is that you could go online to my film school and learn how to make films online. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. That's the setup right there. It's an online film school. Do you do you teach classes? Do they watch videos of yes, you? Yes, they will see me via uh, uh, live streaming, teaching classes and archival videos. And uh, I feel that anyone uh, who wants to make a film can make a film. Uh, and there is very little that you need to know. I, for instance, I say that storyboards are for cowards. Um, <laughs> If you are meticulously uh, uh, making little drawings to say, I think this should happen at this moment, uh, you are not uh, being brave enough to live in this world, and uh, perhaps you should uh, uh, go take a hot bath with b b <laughs> bricks in your bathrobe. I've, that's such an evocative phrase that I've is, never heard before. It's, it's the closest I could get from the German phrase. Oh, I see. You don't have a word for it here. <laughs> Which word did you substitute? The bricks, the bathrobe, the... Well, it's a, it's a concept. Uh, I see. It's, the thing. it's like so, sh schau... Uh, what do you, what, what, how do you say that? Schau Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Yes, the, the, the joy in the despair of others. Right. Is that something that, that you take part in? Uh, from time to time, I am only human. I believe uh, everyone does at some point or another. What matters is whether or not we stay in that place, whether we wallow in the despair of others, whether we uh, can only get our glee from others' pain, uh, whether or not we are putting a, a, a bucket filled with water over the door jamb so that somebody opens the door and then the bucket of water falls on them, or if we are watching the Home Alone movies for the wrong reasons, because um, what you are supposed to be watching that film for is to see a beautiful uh, reunion of a family, uh, not uh, this uh, cruel, sadistic boy <laughs> who somehow his brain devises these insane tortures that he does to these grown men. What, what do you think? What do you think Kevin McAllister is doing as a grown-up? Is he like torturing? I am certain that he is dead. <laughs> You may ask me any, any, any character from cinema, I will tell you if they are alive or dead. Oh, this is good. Really? Fantastic. <laughs> Gotta go with Tron. <laughs> Tron is alive. Tron's alive? Yes. Why do you think that? But he's very good at light cycle. <laughs> Keeps up some exercise with that light cycle. <laughs> good <laughs> You're thinking of the light cycle as an exor exercise bicycle? Yeah, well, it gets, yeah. It's, uh, the light Doesn't he take light cycle class? And have you seen the film Tron? I, I believe I have. The light cycle races are uh, races to the death. <laughs> they are not so much somebody playing sweet 80s jams while uh, everyone <laughs> sweats it out on their light cycles. Maybe, I, maybe I'm forgetting. It could be. Let's see. Okay. How about Uncle Remus' Song of the South? That's a tricky one. He is uh, sealed forever inside the Disney vault. He is, it's true. He is neither alive or dead. He is a Sch Schrodinger's racist movie. How racist is it? You'll have to open it to find out, but... You can't open it to find out because no one would let you see it. <laughs> hmm. As long as you can't see it, it's not that racist. <laughs> it didn't happen, in other words. It happened. Mm. What is your favorite film of all time? I don't know, and you can't say one of your own. You can't say, what was that one you did, Bear Man? I feel... I think that you are referring obliquely once more to uh, the one film you seem to have any cognizance of my having directed, which is to say the film Grizzly Man. Grizzly Man, that's right, that's right. The yes, it is. <laughs> I already knew that it was right. Grizzly Man is about a man who... Why don't I stop you? <laughs> I have to know... What do you think Grizzly Man is about? 
Here is my honest opinion, using context clues of licks I have not clinked on about Grizzly Man. He is a tightrope walker at the circus. Okay, I'm right so far. <laughs> he, I, I will render my judgment after you have finished. Oh, okay. And he's got a real slippery rope. Because someone waxed the rope in the morning, and they're supposed to wax it at night so that it hardens overnight. So that when he gets on it, it's like a real smooth but hard taut rope but they waxed it at night right before his performance so he gets up there and he's like whoa and that's all backstory that we know about that doesn't happen in the film fade in this guy this modern day Goldilocks He's got real long hair, long blonde hair, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. He is best friends with 85 bears. <laughs> and in the end, he finds one that's just right for him, and they fall in love, and they get married. What is uh, so impressive about uh, what you have just said is that uh, not only have you completely uh, misunderstood what my film might be about, it seems you don't have a firm grasp on the story of Goldilocks either. That's fair. She did not sample uh, 85 bowls of porridge. Or try out 85 beds. <laughs> How many did she have? She had three. Three. Of everything. She, was in a, she broke into the home of a family of three bears. Hence the name Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Did she, it, is her name meant to imply she's like good with locks? Like she, that's how she broke into the house or what? Do you remember when you said that this Goldilocks character in your film had a beautiful, long, golden hair? Sure, like locks of hair, yeah. I think it's that. Oh! <laughs> got it, got it. Shall I tell you what Grizzly Man is truly about? I would love to finally figure this out, because I've heard a lot about it. It's a touching story of wish fulfillment. There is a young man who wants something more than anything else in the world, and in the end, he is able to make his wish come true. It sounds amazing. It's like a modern-day Pinocchio or something like that. Certainly, it lacks a, a Jiminy Cricket character. <laughs> that some might argue that was me. Do you sing in the film, or...? All of my singing scenes were cut for time. Also because it was a documentary, it seemed inappropriate. What were some of the songs that were cut out? I would love to hear some. Give us maybe a glimpse of the theme song. Once there was a boy, a very special boy. He had a wish to see a bear from the inside. Those are some short credits. You ask for a taste, not the whole thing. <laughs> That's how you get me. Every time. <laughs> so, so you've obviously directed all these movies. Obviously. <laughs> 
I'm str- I'm struggling here, Werner, because I don't know your work all that much, but I love hanging out with you. You seem profoundly incurious about it. After all the times that we have met, you have never decided to maybe check out a trailer or anything. And then when I am here, you say, I don't know anything about your work, but you never actually ask me any of the films that I've directed. You sort of refer to Grizzly Man in a different oblique way every time. Um, and you don't seem to retain the knowledge of what it is truly about. I know you did Port of Call. That's not the full title. Port. Nope. <laughs> La, La, Louisiana. Where was it? It starts with a person. Nicholas Cage. His name is not in the title. But the character is uh, in the title. The character. Henry... (laughs) Chafall. Let's say yes. Great. Henry Chafall. Port. Henry Chafall Port. That's correct. So you're a master of film from these films. Grizzly Man... Henry Chafall, Port. So who better than you to teach online filmmaking? Exactly. What I like about it is uh, it only involves the computer. It does not involve a desk, uh, which is made of wood, which is made of nature. Um, And anyone can do this. They do not need to plan uh, anything. Uh, All they need to do is have a desire to make a film and... uh, uh, I, what I tell people is, my students, I tell them, uh, all you need to make a film is uh, uh, right in your life. Uh, you must have uh, an insane best friend uh, who uh, tries to drive you mad and maybe you want him to be killed. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you're making a documentary, uh, uh, you must uh, insert yourself into the proceedings as much as possible. Um, and uh, uh, if someone is uh, a mentally ill person with a death wish, uh, make sure that you get them in the light. So those are the three things. So that's, it's almost as if I've taken your course Pretty right now. It. You don't need to click on that link now. <laughs> Thank gosh. How much is your course? It's a reasonable amount of money that uh, I think uh, everyone will have uh, no problem with. Meaning? $10,000. $10,000. Yes, you must have a PayPal account. That's like Trump University money. That's... (laughs) But what would you learn there? I guess how to be a cool dude. and <laughs> I, I never really figured out what that was about either. I depend, it depends what it is you wish to learn. But uh, I wish for people to learn how to uh, make films, and it's online. So I wish that computers will learn how to make films on their own. And uh, I wish that computers would learn how to simulate uh, human beings and uh, then to replace us. You look forward to that day. That's so interesting to me because, you know, I, I am t- I'm just uh, uh, in abject terror of that happening, you know, like human beings to be obsolete. I mean, you know, what would we do? Uh, well, obviously, we would be a slave to the computer masters and uh, do their bidding. What do you think computers would want us humans to do? Uh, plug them in. <laughs> Install software updates. Um, Actually, click yes on would you like to install right, the software right. update? Because I'm not doing that well with that so far. Always try me again tomorrow. You are like the wimpy of uh, computer software updates. Wimpy from the Popeye verse? Yes. That's correct. He would gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I remember. (laughs) I'm pleased. (laughs) I mean, if we didn't plug them in, then we wouldn't be slaves anymore, you know? That's correct, so we must keep plugging them in. (laughs) 
You want to be their slave. I want to be a slave to computers. <laughs> Do you think that they'll, like, uh, sort of like in the movie Ex Machina, is it, have you seen that film? I've heard about it. What, what do you think it's about? Um, I think it's about a man who is married to a machine, then they get divorced. <laughs> and to distract himself, he takes a course in Latin. May, maybe Greek. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Greek, I think. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's Greek. Maybe. Um, well, it's about uh, it's about computers that look like human beings, and they uh, they come out, and you can't tell if someone's a computer. And then the one dude starts going, "Oh my gosh, am I a computer?" And he like tears his face off, and he's like, "Oh, I'm not a computer," and that's exciting. And. <laughs> It's exciting when he turned out not to be a computer. Because he tore his face off for no reason. It was like, oh no, now I have chunks of face in the sink. And was it just a, 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 a terrible fantasy as depicted in the movie Poltergeist where uh, a fellow sees a, a hunk of meat crawling across a kitchen counter and then he has to go into the restroom and uh, he pulls his own face off? Face? <laughs> off? <laughs> I, I don't know. I haven't seen that. You have not seen the film Poltergeist? I've not seen Poltergeist. Is that one of your favorites? You've, you've mentioned two Spielberg films. Is he someone you admire? It was until I discovered he uses all those storyboards. <laughs> what do you think of Jaws? That's like the ultimate man versus nature movie. Um, I like the ending. With... <laughs> Where, where, what? Where Richard Dreyfus like, turns to Roy Scheider? And... A little bit before that. <laughs> <laughs> where they're like, hey, you gotta shut down this town. and A great deal after that. <laughs> <laughs> that story that he tells about where he got his scars? Keep going... <laughs> I mean, they blew a shark up at one point. Bingo. <laughs> I can see why you like that. Yeah. It's pretty obvious, right? Yeah, it is. What do you think of uh, Spielberg's latest works? You got uh, The Terminal? The terminal is wonderful because, of course, it's uh, computer errors that keep this fellow staying in the terminal the computers have granted him a home in this airport all he wants to do is listen to jazz and it's almost like the computers don't like jazz the most human of art forms jazz yeah you get it <laughs> like if he wanted to go to an EDM festival they would probably be right this way <laughs> well good luck with your <laughs> Online course. Thank you. It sounds amazing. Good luck to you with your ignorance of film. <laughs> Can you stick around? Is that... I have literally nowhere else to go. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> well, <laughs> you are going to be very interested, I believe, in our next guest. Is that so? You have a little bit of history with her. Uh, on a couple of the tour stops, you you met her in Los Angeles. I think I know who you mean. <laughs> who else did you meet in Los Angeles? I'm being coy. I know exactly who you mean. <laughs> okay. She uh, is an entrepreneur. She has a business called Carpets and Rugs down there. Please welcome Big Sue. Sue, everyone. Oh, yeah. It's nice to be here. Thank you. It's great to see you, Scott. Werner, how are you? Hello, Big Sue. <laughs> wow, the tension is palpable here. 
Last, uh, last you guys saw each other, you had gone on a date. That's the last you know about it. Yeah. Yeah, we went on a date. Yeah. He texts me a lot after that. It's true. I love texting. Yeah. You don't do it while you drive, do you? Never. It can wait. <laughs> oh, boy. We're going to get a reading of a Yelp review. That's fantastic. This is the Trader Joe's on Hyperion. <laughs> oh, no. That is some Trader Joe. Uh, madness reigns. <laughs> the first challenge your soul must endure is the parking lot. You wait with your vehicle half blocking traffic, creating a perfect circular vortex of anger that encompasses the street and the entrance to the store. Once you achieve admission to the lot, you discover that this is a false achievement. Other motorists stop and start with no seeming thought or plan. Turns once begun are quickly abandoned. The driver seemingly immune to geometry. At last a space opens up, but the price is having to enter the market. Inside, human beings scramble like beetles whose rock has been upended. Though the aisles are wide, it is impossible to avoid physical contact with your fellow shoppers. It is a grotesque parody of the bazaar at Marrakesh, as if dumb animals had been granted only the amount of sentience required to mock humanity. The aisles are not labeled. You must search for every item. The constant walking up and down causes a numbness that borders on profound despair. Your conscious mind registers mere annoyance, impatience, but on a cellular level, your body cries out in weariness. The fatigue you feel is a warning. Millions of years of evolution trying to save you from becoming mired in the tar, from sinking into the warm blackness and being reclaimed by the earth itself. Be sure to get the dark chocolate peanut butter cups. They are right by the register. Dr. Shane. Director? Yeah. He's the director of the Underworld franchise. Please welcome Len Wiseman. Hello. Len Wiseman. Wow. Hello. How exciting to be here. It's thrilling to be here right now. Len Wiseman, have you ever been to Oakland? Many times. You know, I... <laughs> you know, I grew up in California. Uh, I, yeah, uh, you I'm from Fremont, California. Fremont, California. Right? I went to Cupertino High. Where the phone is from. That's right, where the phone is from. Who's this young man? This is my nephew, Todd. Look I apo- at you. I apologize for him. I'm so, so sorry. Why do you say that? He looks like a smart young man. Hello. Thank you. Nice to meet you, sir. It's nice to meet you, little what? guy. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. What? what? He's got lovely manners. Yeah, around you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Were you having a hijink over there? Uh-huh. I don't blame you. I was a high-spirited young guy myself, let me tell you. Where are you? We oh, about yeah. Your, your growing oh, up Oh, are you kidding me? I was young and dumb and full of you-know-what. Todd, that's not for your ears. Oh, uh, it's not for your ears. It's for a <laughs> pussy. <laughs> See, Todd's acting out now <laughs> because we have company. We have company. <laughs> He's very precocious. Watch this. Okay. Oh, it's like a penis. He did the microphone like a penis. That's a good one. You remind me of me when I was your age and also now. (laughs) Have you always talked like this when you were a young guy? What are you talking about? I am a young guy. Well, sure. I'm a good-looking young guy in my 40s. 
Look at me. You're, I should be. I, I, people think I'm an actor, but I'm not a behind the camera. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're still above the line. That's right. <laughs> Movie talk. I don't get it. I feel left out. <laughs> Why do you feel left out? What's the line? Well, there's a line in showbiz when you're making a picture, right? And above the line is the actors, right? Uh-huh. They're the people that are in the movie that everyone wants to see on the screen. And then there's below the line. Oh, my God. That's the crew. We couldn't do anything without them. But, I mean, come on. <laughs> if a crew person got on screen by accident, people would ask for their money back at the box office. Can you imagine that? I don't want to. And my business is imagining stuff. <laughs> I'm just thinking of, like, the Independence Day sequel. They're fighting aliens. Right, that's right. And then some dumb gaffer walks in. Oh, and I mean, God love them. They're doing the grunt work, and I love them all, but I don't want to see them on the screen. (laughs) Pretty people only, thank you very much. What if I was to do an underworld picture, and there's vampires and lichens, werewolves, fighting each other, and then there was like a regular guy looking werewolf. People were like, well, why would he be a werewolf? He looks like my neighbor. That's true. Like vampires and lichens, werewolves, they all are good looking people. That's right, on purpose. Really? Yeah. Is it on purpose from you or on purpose of the vampires and the lichens? Well, both, really, if you think about it. Even though vampires and lichens, werewolves are made up, if you were one of them, are you going to sink your fangs into someone? Are you going to get an uggo? <laughs> no! If you're going to make someone into an immortal creature, you're going to make sure they, they could be in Perfect Ten magazine. Yeah, I love that magazine. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. You have a few hidden under your mattress? Uh, yeah, I hide it under my mattress, my very cool mattress that I have. <laughs> Tell me about this mattress. Well, the coolest part about it, actually, it's not really my mattress, it's my uncle's, but I do get to sleep in the box. Um, and it oh came, my, is the box big enough to sleep in? Well, it's big enough for me to squish in. It's the size of a mini fridge. Oh. And uh, there's like layers of cooling stuff. So you How always, many? Uh, oh, it's a pop quiz. Three, Three, I believe. So you always feel like at the cooler side of the pillow. Like the old expression goes, feel like the cooler side of the pillow. Yep. 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 And Agreed. <laughs> we have a quorum. With three people. And yep. FYI, it's a Lisa mattress. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks to Lisa, our tour sponsors. I, that, I wasn't even thinking of them, but gosh. Yeah, I it, was. It came up so organically. Here we are. Ooh, what's that guy doing over there, the statue? Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are my gods. (laughs) They hold their testes, (laughs) like Uncle Scott said. So clinical. (laughs) Why do you like Perfect Ten magazine? Are you forgetting that you're... Perfect Ten. Uh, It's like a dick and a ball. (laughs) The one zero. My, My nephew Todd is gay. Yeah, so... I'm just saying. Todd is gay. So I can't look at a magazine with chicks in it? Norris Jones. <laughs> Someday someone will listen to that and know what you mean. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Can you imagine a world? I will say it's the best impression you're capable of. <laughs> no, I meant that as a positive. <laughs> like, it's your best impression. Ugh. I'm sorry. Now I'm going to be punished again. Yeah. It did sound like a backhanded compliment. I know. I didn't mean it like that. And now I'm going to have to go in the cage. God, you don't put your nephew in a cage. I mean, do it's, you? it's not a cage per se. It's a dishwasher with a baby gate in front of it. <laughs> a dishwasher. <laughs> it's not in the wall. It's like laying out in the backyard. It's his old one. He threw out. In the sun. <laughs> Did I come out too early? <laughs> nope. <laughs> right on time, Lynn. Right on time. So, Len, it's so great to see you. It's great to see you, Scott. I haven't seen you since Tarrytown, New York. Oh, Tarrytown. Next door neighbors to Sleepy Hollow. Of course, Sleepy Hollow television series That's produced right. by you. That's right, I produced it. Was that picked up for another season? Probably. It's a big hit for the Fox Network. Congrats, sir. Thank you, Todd. 
If you ever need someone to be on the show, I'd love it. What would you like to do in the world of film production? I don't care. (laughs) I love it. You've been Icona popped by the best. Don't Icona pop your nephew. Yeah, that hurts my feelings. Son, what would you like to do on the movie picture business? Well, I'd like to be an actor. I talked to Haley Joel Osment about it, and he said I could be really good at it. He's, he, he has a scam where he tries to get child actors, because he was such a big child actor. He has a scam where he gets them to come over to his house, Yeah, and he like teaches them acting, right. supposedly. Right, right, right. Yeah. But what he's really doing is he's getting them money, and he's buying marijuana with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huge pothead. He buys marijuana cigarettes. Yeah. Well, I still think I could be a good actor. I could play any role ever in the whole show. Let's see you act. What? what I okay. mean, do you, um, Len, you must have some scenes coming up in Sleepy Hollow. Sure I do. Here we go. Okay, get ready. Everyone's in this. <laughs> really? Even me, sir? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm working with what I got. What about Michael Cervais? Who? Is it Cerv... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> the guy from Fun Home. <laughs> yeah, you be him. Good. All this right, so... Who am I? You're, you're going to be... The local constable in Sleepy Hollow. What's a constable? It's like a police person, but it's old-timey times. Okay. Right? I got, yeah, I got it. So even though it's modern day, they're very tied to old-timey times in Sleepy Hollow because they're very famous. It's very famous because of the Headless Horseman attacks sure. from the Washington Irving novel, except in this reality, there was no Washington Irving. The, the Headless Horseman, he's a real guy. Whoa. And Ichabod, Ichabod Crane, he came from the past out of like a, a witch's pool. And in this universe, did no one has ever read the novel Sleepy Hollow? It doesn't or? exist. It doesn't exist. Now, I think we've talked about this before. I think we have. We've gone over a few books that do and do not exist in the Sleepy Hollow universe. Yeah, what other books don't exist? <laughs> well, I don't remember because it was a long time ago. Right, right. But if you throw a title at me, I can tell you if it's in there or not. How about The Doors of Perception? No. Really? So there's no doors. There's no doors to the band? There's no band, The Doors. And now, now you're thinking, I want to live in that Sleepy Hollow yeah. universe. Oh, here we go. Oh, the raw sexual bass line drives me crazy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on to touch me, babe. Don't you know that I am not afraid, ma? What was that promise that you made, ma? Why won't you tell me what she said? What a gossipy song it is. Yeah, really. It's a gossipy song. And how does he get from, hey, come on and touch me, to, hey, tell me what you said. Right, I know. He's bossy. Can we do the scene? Yeah. So. By the way, I think Cerverus. Is that his name, Michael Cerverus? No one cares. Okay. (laughs) You're the constable of Sleepy Hollow. I'm the constable. All right? So you're a a tough policeman. I got it. You are Michael Watts' name. Okay. And you're playing the Headless Horseman. So, (laughs) zero dialogue. Okay. You gotta, you, you gotta, hold on a second. I thought you call action. Oh, sorry. I've never been in a movie. You don't even know what this is. <laughs> okay, so. The Headless Horseman's menacing you. Uh huh. Get Jimi Hendrix over here. <laughs> so the, no, but don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Purpose. You're ruining my life. No one likes it. You're ruining my life. And my life's already horrible. <laughs> You're ruining everyone's life on stage. <laughs> so you see the Headless Horseman, your mortal enemy, a supernatural demon from hell. All right. And so what you say is you put on some tough guy talk, <laughs> and you say, <laughs> you say, hey, how'd you like to be the bodiless horseman After I shoot you with my constable shotgun. Okay. All right? And you throw some tough sauce on it. So it's like, look out, this guy means business. And then all the ladies and some of the gentlemen also are going like, oh boy, I want a piece of that action. All right, I got it. Is that okay for me to talk to him that way? He's a, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's post pubescent, right? I'm not sure. We've never figured that out. How old are you, Todd? Middle school. Okay. 
All right, let's do the scene. All right, all right ready? <clears throat> Get on your marks here. All right, and action! Line. <laughs> I say. What was it? Hey, headless horseman. Yeah. How'd you like to be a bodiless horseman? Got it. So I'm gonna sh- hold on a second. I remember, though. No, I remember it now. Hold on a second, because I'm going to shoot you with my constable shotgun. Okay. Okay. Back to one. Take two, and... Action! Hey. Line. Fuck. Okay, Todd. Headless horseman. I, Len, I can't. I just can't deal with this. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I can do it. I don't want to. I don't want to have a scene on set in front of the crew because it's it sets a bad example. Can you talk to? I will. Okay. Talk to him. I will talk to him. All right. Okay. It's I just need, it's a waste of my time and it's I a waste need, of your time. I need you to stay. It's a waste of the crew's time. I need time. you to stay in it. Okay. I need you to stay in it. Okay. I'm, I'm in here's, it. Here's oh, what? I'm in it. I know. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because this whole thing, if you if you're not in it, it all falls apart. Okay. You're the headless. Hey, horse. we're having a private conversation oh, hey. here. Sorry. Hey, I'm the headless horseman, so why don't no, you no, no, see no. You're your not way the headless out of it? Horseman. What? Did you say I'm the headless horseman, so why don't you see your way out of it? I got mixed up because you were having an A and B conversation. So here's what you say. You say hey, I'm the headless horseman. Hey, no, you're not the headless Sorry. horseman. He's the headless horseman. No, I know. He said that. He says that. Okay. No, he doesn't say anything. I can't, how am I? Sp- I can't. I, what are you? We're having a private conversation. I'm sorry, Len. We're having a work session over here. All right. Throw the lines out the window. Okay, no lines. I want you to do it from your gut, from a little lower than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I want do. you to really throw your heart into this. Okay. And so imagine what you would do if a horrible supernatural creature from hell dressed in some Revolutionary War costume. And he's walking around, he's got a chainsaw on his back or whatever. <laughs> I think like he has in this, he has a GPS for some reason. Okay. So imagine that's coming at you. Okay, You're a rough, it. tough lawman. You're protecting your town. Got it, got you it. You don't want this monster to get anybody in the I town. Got it. You probably love somebody. So. Yeah. Okay. Use all that, and then when he comes out, just react naturally how you would okay. react in the character. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody ready on the marks? Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm ready. Back to one. Okay, Scott, honey, I really need you to. I'm Michael. What does he look like? Michael Serverus. You want me to call you Michael? Hey, kiddo. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Norris oh. Jones. Len, okay. Len, what does he look like? It's again? a, it's a four-word impression. <laughs> Hey, kiddo, Norris Jones. What does he look like again? What's that? What's he dressed like? He's dressed like, he's wearing like, you know, a dumb red coat thing, breeches and stuff, and he's got like, uh, you know, he's got like a sword. Okay, good. And he's got like, uh, you know, old-fashioned pistols that takes a half hour to load. And no head. No head. Got it. Remember, he's got no head. That's the most distinctive thing, no head. Okay. And it's like, if you saw that, here's, here's what acting is. Pretend you saw that in real life. How would you feel? And then feel that way. Okay. And then say it. Okay. All right, let's go. Ready? On your marks. Okay, this is take three. And action. Hey, are you the guy responding to my uncle's Craigslist ad? <laughs> okay, cut, cut. That's what I would say. All right, but all right, can I drop out of a character here for a second? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> What? No, You're no! You're not supposed no. to tell people about that. Help me, Lynn! <laughs> now look, I don't like to get involved in family squabbles. Help me! You're not going to be an actor, not if I have anything to say about you it. You don't want me to make my own money. No, that's right. You... Because you're just going to waste it. Yeah, because whenever I try to do chores to get allowance, you pay me in, in Cheerios. <laughs> and kisses. Ugh! They're kisses on the mirror to yourself. Well, I let you watch. How is that? That's the payment? (laughs) And I have to go, thank you, thank you. I can almost feel it, uncle. (laughs) Such a freak. You do sound like a bit of a freak. (laughs) So, Len, uh, obviously we saw each other in Terrytown. We've just covered that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we just covered that 15 minutes ago. But what are you doing here in Oakland? I mean, it's the Bay Area in general. I'll tell you why. I'm in the Bay Area. They're very proud of it. They They really are. They love it here. They hear the name. Well, look, 
We should all be so proud of our names that if somebody said our name out loud, we go, woo! Let's try it. Okay. Todd. Woo! Len. Woo! Daddy. (laughs) A lot of people are responding to that, but not me. Daddy? Michael Severus. Hey, kiddo. (laughs) You can't even do woo in the voice. You can't even imagine what it would be like if the guy went woo. Let me try, let me try, let me try. No, oh wait, what's his name? <laughs> that was the Norris Jones. Michael. <laughs> Nora Jones? Nora Jones. Okay, you're Nora Jones, and someone just said, hi, Nora Jones. <laughs> Woo! There we go, perfect. All right, did it. Okay, so, here's why I'm in the Bay Area, because I heard they put a gigantic statue of Venus, the goddess of love, on top of that big new apartment space in San Francisco. So here's what I want to do. Organize the biggest sex party (laughs) in the world. Holy moly. I want to get everybody from San Fran, (laughs) O-Town. Isn't that Orlando? Don't you remember that, that boy band competition show? Ashley, That's where I remember it from. Ashley oh. Angel. You have a poster of Ashley Angel on your wall. All right, all right. Oak, then Oak Town. Is it Oak Town? It's Oak Town. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm sure I'm sorry. <laughs> and of course, Mill Valley. And we'll have the most gigantic sex party it's going to go a city wide multi city sex party multi all under the watchful eye of a watu of v- no the watcher no v- he, he how about only, that guy? he only intervenes that's if- right no if that guy huh, all he can do do you know who a watu the watcher is no he's a big bald guy lives on the moon and like all michael he- server server is what? He's a big bald guy. What I <laughs> Does he live on the moon? No. Then why did you say that? <laughs> now, I never get exasperated with you. We've always gotten along. We love each but other. But we love each we other. We love each other. I've invited you to all my sex parties. I've never come. You've never come. You have oh. there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We have fun. We adult, have a lot of fun. We have adult fun. Adult fun. words. <laughs> Above 17. That's right. 17 and over fun. That's right. PG fun. But that's R-rated fun, I guess. PG fun home for you. (laughs) PJ fun home. AJ fun home. (laughs) I don't know what's going on. (laughs) You got to listen from the beginning. (laughs) So, I'll I'll skip it. So, a watcher, the watcher. He lives on the moon. He's forbidden to interfere. He just records the actions of people. Oh, what a sad life. It is a sad life. Now, imagine he's watching a sex party. He's like, oh, boy, I'd like to get down there and participate in that sex party. I can't. I'm a watcher the watcher. He's not allowed to intervene, like stop something from happening, but can he participate? I, I haven't figured no, that out. No, because it can affect things. Imagine we're having this sex party, and then all of a sudden, a giant bald man from the moon walks in. And he's like, who's free? And it's like, hey, this sex party's been ground to a halt because you're a a creature from another world. He's a creature? Well, he's not human. He has odd proportions. Yeah. His his head is probably like as big as this. So he looks like you? (laughs) It's very saucy, this one. Weird slam. (laughs) All right, so... <laughs> yeah, so but you, you hurt your feelings, right? <laughs> yeah, I did, so it, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so what... Uh, you want to have this giant sex party. I want to have... What I'd like to organize is thousands and thousands of people all having a sex party at the same time. Wow. And I think if we can do that, we could change the world. Because, thanks for the woos, because if other people could see this all across this country and all across the world, Todd. (laughs) Don't be frightened, Todd. I never got this much eye contact. I'm just leaning for emphasis. Uh, uh. I think, obviously, 
it would be televised. Like, there's no way the media can ignore. Hold on a second. You're tis- tisking. No, but you're, 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 that is true. Like, they would have to cover it. They would have to. There's no way. You're telling me that the major television networks, cable outlets, Grit, America's Family newspaper, there's no way that they're going to hear about this massive sex party going on without saying we got to go down there and cover it. And then everyone's not talking about Donald Trump anymore. They're not talking about Bernie bros and shrillery or whatever. Everyone's mad at each other. (laughs) Jill Stein? I don't know. And then, instead, everybody's saying, how about this sex party that's going on? Let's talk about that. Everyone will want to talk about it. And then the more they talk about it, the more they're going to want to have a sex party of their own. Whoa. And then before you know it, it spreads all over the place. World peace. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, not bad. That's, that's my humble plan. Let's have a gigantic sex party to cure the world. So it's sort of the sex party version of the end of Watchmen. Yeah, instead of a gigantic octopus... Wrecking some buildings. Let's just all have some fun with it. It could work. So it's like the sex party version of the end of Aladdin. Refresh my mem, because I don't... Uh, I don't know, they got married or something. (laughs) It's a lot like that. More like like the honeymoon, post-credit sequence of Aladdin. If you know who to talk to, you can see that. <laughs> really? The animators drew yeah. that? They drew, they drew Aladdin and Jasmine having sex on well, their wedding night. Well, they drew the word sex in the clouds. Oh, yeah. That was the beginning of it. Yeah. <laughs> that was so subliminally like, oh, boy, I want them to have sex with each other. But, of course, we all wanted that the second we saw the two characters. Yeah, and in The Lion King, too. Yeah, I wanted those lions to F. I wanted Timon and Pumbaa to get it on. <laughs> they did. Did they have sex with each other? In the spinoff. They spun off fucking... <laughs> was the spinoff a porn? Do you mean The Lion King one and a half? <laughs> that was just a straight yeah. up porn? That was yeah. a straight to video, yeah. It's interesting. They're an interesting company, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> All those weird things that they did that we yeah. just talked about. Song of the South. Yeah. <laughs> weird. Strange. What do, uh, if you could reboot Song of the South, what would you do with it? Oh, well, I'd call it Sex of the South, first of all. Sure. I'd put a bunch of <laughs> vampires and mummies in there. <laughs> Maybe a creature from the Black Lagoon, but a sexy one. Would you put a twist on the name of that like you did with lichens and werewolves? Oh, for the Black Lagoon creature? Yeah. Yeah, I'd call them like, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, amphibians. <laughs> So uh, we've always been at war with the amphibians. Is it spelled like amphibians, but you just have to know to pronounce it different? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's an O instead of an A at the end. Thank you. Amphibians. Thank and you, so sir. The mummies, Thank we you, say, sir. We'll say mummies. Thank you, sir. Thank you for explaining, Thank you, sir. sir. <laughs> what is this, Oliver Twist? What's going <laughs> Thank on? Thank you, sir. Thank you. We need pudding. <laughs> pudding. Ooh, pudding. Ooh, the pudding. Ooh, the pudding. The person who told me that story was supposed to be here tonight, but... Is that so? But she couldn't come at the That's last That's interesting. Minute. Well, I'm glad we got to grind the show to a halt by <laughs> referencing a private story. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, and even funny. the one person who would have understood it isn't here. It would have been cool if she was. She was supposed sure to be. would have been. Oh, let's go down the line and we'll say what would have been cool that would have happened but didn't. All right. She might have cheered or laughed at that when no one else made a peep. <laughs> right. If there was a female version of the Goonies. What? Weren't there some females in the Goonies? Martha Plimpton was in there. Yeah, but they would Wasn't be... Wasn't she a Goonie? They would be men. Oh, you're saying like a reboot of like the Ghostbusters. Yeah, exactly. Wait, you're saying if she was here, how it would have changed things like the butterfly effect? Well, hold on a second. There's the, a misunderstanding. The buttercream effect. <laughs> Scott, Scott, hold on a second, honey. Here's what the misunderstanding was. I was saying we'll just talk about a cool thing that didn't happen, not necessarily about the show. But you took it along the lines of what if that lady had been here? It was a lady, right? That you said it was a lady. It was a lady, yeah. What if she She still is a lady? And then you nailed it right on the head that she would have probably made a little noise, a hoot or a holla, to Uh say, I got it. 
All right, cool. <laughs> now, here's what I think would be cool that didn't happen, but if it had happened, would have been cool. Oh, boy. If we all had a sex party. Everyone here tonight? Yeah. I think, now here's the thing. If you've ever had to try, if you've ever tried having a mass sex party in theater seats, it's very difficult. And there's room, of course, because uh, someone stays on the chair, the other one gets on top of them, and now there's all these fun empty chairs. And so other people can come in and watch, which is a big part of the sex party, is just being a bystander. What because percentage of people are bystanders? In 10%. A sex party? 10%. 10%. 10%. Okay. Yeah. Bystanders? Or B-Y. B-I or B-Y. Can I tell you something? Yeah. It's both. All the bystanders are bisexual. <laughs> I guess you'd have to be if you're watching but that. But here's the thing. It's not, even about what, it's not even about their pleasure, although let me tell you something, they enjoy it. But what it's about is, it's about the people who are indulging in the sex party knowing, oh, I'm being watched by that one, I'm being watched by that one, and then you know they're bi, so it, it fits in with whatever your thing is. Sure. Unless you're a closed-minded bigot, in which case, you're not invited to my sex party. And no one here in the Bay Area is a closed-minded bigot. That's right. This is the most open-minded community in the world. That's right. Just ask them. They'll tell it to you. They'll tell you. In fact, don't even ask them. They'll still tell you. Yeah. And they'll tell you how much L.A. sucks. Oh, will they? Oh, they love talking about that. Oh, there's nothing I hate worse than a city I've never been to. I hate the idea of some cities. <laughs> anyway, that's my thing. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Len Wiseman. He is uh, an executive producer of television shows, a director. Please welcome to the stage Gary Marshall. No, what are you doing? Don't put... I don't know why the towels on the stools. Anal seepage. That's, that's where you start? I've been on the stage for two seconds. You're already, already mentioning anal. Come on. How long do you like to wait before you mention anal? Uh, forever. It's great to see you, Gary. Please continue to call me oh, Gary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. Usually I start with Mr. Marshall. I know. It's, it's a fun game we play. A cat and mouse. <laughs> a badinage, if you will. A Gary and Mr. Marshall. <laughs> yeah. Like the old expression goes. Well, you know, cat and mouse. That caught on. Why can't Gary and Mr. Marshall catch on the same way? Nobody knows what you're talking about. People know what a cat is. They know what a mouse is. They understand the relationship. They don't get along. I get it. It's, I feel like it's pretty one-sided, that relationship. You know? <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> well, cats... Mice obviously don't like cats. No, they don't. But cats love mice. They love to eat them. <laughs> And here's what cats do that's so vicious and horrible. They play around with the mouse before they eat it when it's uh, just barely clinging to life. Why do you think that is? They're insane. <laughs> the, the animal kingdom is riddled with insanity. Like everybody's talking about, oh, is there homosexuality in the animal kingdom? Is that nature or whatever? Let's talk about how animals are crazy. Who does that, what a cat does? What's the biological imperative is what I'm saying. I guess cats are sort of like serial killers in a way. Yeah, like, uh, what's his name? Hannibal Lecter? Sure! <laughs> Any serial killer? <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. There's one right there. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. <laughs> okay, and he's got a title, too. 
The Zodiac Killer. D- serial killers, they usually like to have titles, don't they? Like, they know they've made it if they have a title. Uh, I don't know because I'm not a psychotic murderer. I know that the newspaper gives them a title, but uh, I don't know if the serial killers themselves are saying, Ma, good news. I got a promotion at work today. Directors, they usually don't get titles like that, do they? Like, you know, Hamlet, he got the melancholy Dane. You know, but Gary Marshall, he doesn't get anything. Yeah, I'm not a made-up character. I'm a real person. But if you could get a title, what would it be? The- Mr. Marshall, which you will call me, you Gary Privileges have been revoked. No! Yeah, you push my buttons. I'm sorry, Mr. Marshall. Please call me Gary. <laughs> oh, I'm back. I can't stay mad at you. You're a rascal. I want to pinch your cheeks. Please don't. Why? Why does everyone want to pinch my cheeks? Because you're a rascal. All right, all right, Mr. Marshall. Oops, Gary. Please call me Gary. <laughs> Gary, it's so good to see you. I, it's I, good to see you. Hey, and it's good to be seen because another day I'm alive on this earth. Do you ever wake up in the morning and you're just like, ooh, got him again? <laughs> you mean God? <laughs> or the Grim Reaper. Fooled you. Oh, the Grim Reaper. What's the difference, really? See, when you get to be my age, there's very little difference between the idea of uh, anthropomorphic personification of death chasing you and God. What's the difference? Yeah. I wonder if God is a skeleton. This is a good what if. Like you get up there. That would freak you out, wouldn't it? Oh, it would be a nightmare. Are you kidding me? You think you went to the other place. Did, did you make a mistake? What? Then what does God say? Like, why is he a skeleton? It's just like, I made you in my image and then I put flesh on you. Because I saw how it looked, and I was like, ooh. I can't do anything about myself. That's but. what it looks like. No, thank you. Theological discussions aside. Sure. Let's put them aside. Let's is- talk about regular guy stuff. Oh, boy. I've been waiting to do this with you. Have you really? Locker room talk All with right. Gary you, Marshall. You start it. Let's see where it goes. Did you see that new girl at school? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. What? We're at school together? When I think of locker room talk, I think of guys like, you know, sort of nudging each other and pointing out a good looking young woman. Who's also in the locker room? <laughs> These days, who knows, right? And that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Gary. Oh, okay. Here we go. Now the real you comes out. No, obviously, you know, that is uh, 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 an issue that's going on right now. Do you stand anywhere on that? Listen, everybody's worried about this bathroom stuff. Don't worry about it. Someone's doing something weird in the bathroom. It's obvious right away. You don't have to worry about, like, oh, I got to keep my eye on this one. Uh, You'll know it when it happens. You'll know it before it happens. How about that? You might be thinking, I'm going to go into the bathroom. You see somebody go in, like, I'm going to wait a little bit. Is there any place on earth worse than the bathroom? Let's say even under perfect conditions, <laughs> it's a chore to go in there. It's, it, no one enjoys going in there. No, no one, no one I, relishes it. Here's the thing. I'm not a fan of the human body. A lot of flaws. If it was up to me, it would be designed a lot different. How would you design it? I mean, obviously, uh, our mouths are here. Our buttholes are down here. <laughs> Reverse it. What would you do? I feel like you got some 
unhealthy obsessions. Like, I wonder what happened to you as a child. How many times have you mentioned rectums in the five minutes I've been on stage with you? I just think it would be interesting. It would make going to the bathroom really hard if it were on the top of your head. If you're going to redesign the human body, why would you still have that process be a part of it? So you're saying get rid of it totally. Get rid of it totally. What we should be is just floating brains. In, in space or in jars or, or... I'll go in a jar, sure. <laughs> jar seems very delicate to me, though. I would say let's have a brain and you got a force field around you. Like right? a Sue Storm invisible bubble around it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Who is this, uh, some girl from school that you got a crush on? Just a brain, but then how would we distinguish, you know, what we find attractive? We wouldn't. We'd be free from that burden. Would we mate? Yeah, you hang around with people, other brains. <laughs> you know what I mean? Would we, would we be monogamous, I, I even wonder? Who cares? We're a bunch of brains. <laughs> Don't you see, like, this, this frees us from all the drudgeries and the things we got to think about all the time. And the problems, oh, well, how do I look in the mirror? I, look, I don't like my hair cut. I'm so mad. I told her to do this, and she did the other thing. You know what I mean? You, We're free from all of that. Seems like you're really upset about a haircut you got. <laughs> it's an example that I'm using. You're saying this is what you wanted? <laughs> Look, I'm an old man. Hair is at a premium right now. I work with what I got. You'll see. You'll I hope so. See. I hope so. Yeah, you think you're going to be uh, George Papad or whatever. When you get to be my age. <laughs> That's an age-appropriate reference for me. <laughs> sure. Sure. People your age know who... I know who that is. You know, hey, you, you know, you know Spring Chicken anymore. He loved it when a plan came together. That's right. He was on the A-team. Maybe you remember him from Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> Seemed like someone booed Breakfast at Tiffany's. That's a weird reaction. That's a strange stance to Not take. Not Mickey Rooney, George Papad. The Mickey Rooney thing, I get. How did that... I, I don't think that even held up by the end of the movie when it first came out. I think there were probably people walking out of that theater going, yeesh. Do you ever think of having a character like that on Happy Days or anything? No! What, may, what about my reaction to Mickey Rooney in that movie made you think that's what I wanted to do? Well, you did have, uh, what's his name from the Karate Kid in that? <laughs> Pat Morita, that's right. Pat Morita, right. yeah. He played uh, Arnold. He, or was he Al? No, he was Arnold. He was Arnold. Then he left the show, and then Al took over. Right. I don't know where uh, uh, Pat Morita thought he was going to go. He was going to get a better gig than Happy Days. Hit show. Everyone loves his character. It's based on his uh, stand-up. You know, he was a stand-up comedian. He, really? Pat Morita was Pat a stand-up comedian? Pat Morita was a stand-up comedian. And this is a true thing I'm about to tell you. <laughs> so keep that in mind. He called himself the Hip Nip. That is a four true thing that you are welcome to look up and do not blame Gary Marshall. It was a different time. It was a different time. time. It was, a different, it was time. a different time. I don't know if it was like a Pangea effect where we were so fascinated by people of other races we couldn't stop talking about it. I do remember those days growing up like if anyone was not a white person you would have to mention it. What do you mean? Just in life? Just like any time you mention that person, you would have to bring it up. That's right. It's different now. It's different now. There's the a melting we've, pot. We've all melted together. It's exactly right. You know? That's how it should be. That's how it should I be. I did on Happy Days, we did a very special episode. Before that was a thing, we did a very special episode about racism in the 1950s. And there was a black character on the show. His name was Styx. He played the drums. All he was right. on for a good two episodes. <laughs> one of which was all about his race. 
And it was uh, everyone, the gang learned the lesson because there was a party and they knew that uh, Sticks was going to be there. And so a lot of the people's parents, they were bigots. And the parents said, you can't go to that party because there's going to be a colored guy there. And then they had a meeting about it. And there was a, <laughs> there was a character named Bag on the show. <laughs> he was a recurring character. He was this dumpy guy. He wore a letterman's jacket that said Bag. This is all true. <laughs> and Bag called a meeting. Everyone said they were going to go to the party, and then Bag called a meeting, and he's like, hey, whose parents told them not to come to the party? And everyone raised their hands, and then Bag said, and this is a curious line reading. Bag raised his own hand and said, mine also. <laughs> But Bag had called the meeting. Bag had called the meeting. He just—he was trying to see, like, hey, we all had the same experience, right? Right? right. We got our parents of bigots telling us not to go to this party. But then in the end, the gang came around. Of course, Fonzie, the coolest guy, too cool to be a bigot. Sure, yeah. I can't imagine Fonzie being a bigot. Because he wasn't. Exactly. <laughs> what an evolution of a character. First, Fonzie starts out, he's a hood. He beats people up and stuff. He wears a windbreaker. He wears a windbreaker. Well, he wears a windbreaker when he's next to the motorcycle because the combination of leather jacket and motorcycle would have torn the country apart. <laughs> you got to understand, this is, Watergate had just happened. The nation is reeling. What do we know? Up is down, black is white. If we had seen <laughs> this middle-aged Jewish guy pretending to be... This Italian street tough Oof. standing next to a motorcycle wearing a leather jacket? There would be no America today. And I'm so glad there is one. Yeah, it's going all right. Could be better. Could be better, couldn't Could be it? Could be better. Did you ever think about making a uh, sitcom with Donald Trump? Back when he was popular in the 80s? I didn't see the angle. Where's the angle? You got to have, here's what you got to have. Mm -hmm. You got to have nice looking young people that everyone enjoys spending a half hour with. This Donald Trump, even when he was popular, he was too old. <laughs> He's too sour and mean. All he cared about was money. The characters on my shows, they were nice people. You liked them. Mm -hmm. They were uh, kids from the 50s. They were aliens from other planets. They were uh, Mindy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Still keep up with Mindy? Sure, Pam. Pam. Absolutely. Yeah. She's like, you got to understand. Here's what, son, you got to understand. All these kids that I work with over the years, no matter how old they get, they're all like my kids. They are. You have so many children. I do. You've done so many place. shows. You've done so many movies. I mean, Julia That's Roberts right. is one of your... She's one of my girls. Of course she is. Of course. Ashton Kutcher, the coach. Ashton the coach. She's one of my kids. He hey. tried to play a prank on me. I pretend I don't see it coming. And then I'm like, you got me again. <laughs> Who plays pranks on an old man? I know. There's a high degree of I, I don't risk know about in that. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a real Annabelle Lecter, that kid. <laughs> And then, of course, you just had a movie come out, Mother's Day. That's right. Big. Oh, zero applause? <laughs> How many movies did you all have come out recently? Are you making any more holiday movies? There's so many great... That's all I'm doing. Here's the thing. There's a plan for the rest of my life. I make these holiday movies... That is what I leave behind, so there's every holiday covered, so no one ever is stuck for a movie to watch on any given holiday. <laughs> How many times uh, St. Patrick's Day rolls around and you say, what are we going to watch, Darby O'Gill and the Little People? Do you have anything, you have anything coming up? I mean, uh... We're good up here, thank you. <laughs> Lady yells out, Flag Day. Of course we're going to make Flag Day. We're going to make them all! What about Halloween? I was thinking about Halloween recently. Didn't we talk about this in Toronto? Maybe. 
You want to talk about it again? Sure, why not? How many Howl FM subscribers do we have here tonight? <laughs> it's maybe too many to talk about it again. What about what about the Eves? You know, you got Christmas Eve. I sure, did, everyone. I did New Year's Eve. You did New Year's Remember Eve. Remember that? Sure, yeah. Why not continue in that vein? Christmas Eve, All Hallows Eve. And why not then do New Year's Day? That's not fun. New Year's Day? Everyone like gets up and watches the Rose Parade and nurses their hangovers? Stays indoors? Who wants to see that? A bunch of formerly attractive people with bedhead, caked on makeup, throwing up at a uh, waste paper basket. That's not a movie. What, uh, uh, what am I, Vincent Gallo? You said you were going to do them all, though. I'm going to do them, but that's not a... It is a holiday. It's a, it's a, it's a federal holiday. So no federal holidays. But they're, they're not, they're, nobody celebrates anything. Right. So no they're JFK. So, they're solemn, like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, President's Day or uh, Martin Luther King Day. It's like, it's a day that you just think about people who have died. Veterans Day, you know, Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no death days. No death holidays. But I said we're going to do them all, so we're going to do them. <laughs> Mixed message here. <laughs> I'm saying these movies are going to be less popular. Sure. Less popular than Mother's Day. Right. <laughs> you mark my words. That movie, you heard of Office Space? <laughs> Mother's Day is going to be an office space on DVD. People are going to get the Blu-ray. Because, here's why. Here's something that will never go out of style. Being uncomfortable with your family on a made-up holiday. How, right. how, can I, how can I get two hours of not talking going? How about we put in this movie? Everyone has to shut up. And guess what? Everyone's relieved. You kids, you're like, oh, it's so awkward around my parents, you know, to be around the family. That's how your mother and father feel, too. They're like, what? I can't relate to this guy. Sure. Everyone hates each other. Everyone hates each other. And that is the message of my films. I get that from them. I paint a world where everyone likes each other because it's a fantasy. But the movie is made for the average everyday person who knows families are a misery to be endured until you are dead. You hear that, young man? <laughs> oh, look at this guy. What are you doing here? Got some cool parents. Like, hey, we don't care what he is. He's got to learn about this stuff sooner or later. We make the call. By the time he's in therapy, we'll be gone. Good looking out, mom and dad. Oh, I'll never forget, we bought him his first trucker hat. <laughs> Went to Sears and had a family portrait done. He just you held up. Four years old? No, it's his fourth trucker hat, is it's what he's trying hat. to say. <laughs> he collects them. What's your favorite episode of Girls? <laughs> I presume that's a typical Sunday night in this household. <laughs> How did you feel about uh, Father John Misty splitting off from uh, Fleet Foxes? Was that weird for you? Or? Difficult. Robin Pecknold says he doesn't talk to him anymore. Oh, it's one thing when I do it. <laughs> well, Gary, oh, you all right there? What happened on that? His stool. I don't know. Somebody get the Allen wrench. <laughs> this Bjorn is about to fall apart. <laughs> it's Ikea. It's an Ikea reference. Ikea, I get it. All right. I don't know hey, if you I get... Ikea because I care. Uh. Don't look at me. Turn does, around. Does it say no refunds on the tickets? Because <laughs> it's still early. Oh, Gary. It's great to have you here. It really is. 
Now we've reset conversationally again. We have, haven't we? You run out of stuff to say. Hey, it's great to see you. It really is. It's like you're a goldfish hosting the show. <laughs> oh, look who's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to murder you. <laughs> hey, I heard that. <laughs> what? I got this one turned way up. <laughs> oh. What about the other one? I, I, don't, I don't need both at the same time. Um, can you stick around with... I got literally nowhere else to go. Fantastic. <laughs> Gary Marshall, everyone.